Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, all the praises, all the honor, all the glory be unto our Heavenly Father Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone, the taught us the truth, and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you, prophets and teachers, you Akim, that has your lives daily to push this true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures to help edify the elect. Shalom, peace and love to you believers, you Akim, you Fiyakwathim, and children. We're waiting for these last but final prophecies to happen in the earth and the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. It's not promised unto Esau, Edom, all right, to receive immortality. You know it's not. And not uh, to the other nations either. All right, the only nation that has promised immortality or everlasting life is the children of Israel. And thus, beginning with Yahweh Shai, then the elect, all right, in which Yahweh Shai was the first of the brethren to experience this. All right, then the elect of the nation of Israel, as the scriptures say, every man in his order. But unto Esau, Edom, it ain't promised to you, my nigga. <laughs> all right, it ain't promised to you. All right, you can try all of the, the gimmicks and all of the schemes and your science and technology and whatever to try to achieve this, but you would never achieve it. All right, it's all going to amount up to vanity, to nothing, to emptiness, all right, to nothingness. All right, in which um, you have Edomites that are making their predictions, all right, in which uh, one Google engineer predicts human immortality by 2030, but at what cost? And this article comes from April 5th, 2023, the year that all of the hopeful prophecies of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah come to pass. All right, in which the article reads, a self-described futurist and former engineer at, in, at tech giant Google has predicted that humans will achieve immortality by the year 2030. Well, first of all, it's not going to happen. All right, you can try as much as you want, but you'll never achieve it. All right, the only ones that will receive immortality will be the children of Israel through Yahweh Shai, not through you, not through you devils, not through your science, your technology, your engineering and mathematics. This will not be achieved. You will only get so far. All right, the Heavenly Father is the one orchestrating you and causing you to do these particular things that you're doing to uh, uh, lead up to this, all the sin and iniquity that, that you're doing, all right, just to destroy you eventually, all right? Your, your plans are futile, all right? Your plans are, are, will be a failure. Ray Curve, Curve Wheel, or Kier, Wheel, author of the book, The Singularity is, is Near, made this prediction. He also predicted that in 2029, a year before the target date of human immortality, artificial intelligence, AI, will be able to pass the Turing test or Turing test devised by British computer scientist Alan Turing. The test seeks to determine if machines can exhibit intelligent behavior in the same manner as human beings. And no, I right, know. All right, which you have um, something called sentient beings. They want to create AI that is sentient, all right, that mimics, you know, the thought patterns, the way of thinking, the emotions uh, um, of human beings in so much that they can pass it as something that has its own self-sustaining life. The reason that you are able to think, the reason that you are able to reason, the reason that you're able to, you know, understand speech, all of that comes from the spirit that the Heavenly Father has put inside of you. All right. Not through you being able to create things through your technology and the scripture that proves that. I want to say that's um, the book of Sirach, the 17th chapter or the 16th chapter. Let's try. It's the 17th chapter. Sirach 17 and 1. Yahweh created men of the earth and turned him to it again. He gave them few days and short time and power also over the things therein. He endued them with strength by themselves and made them according to his image and put the fear of man upon all flesh and gave him dominion over the beasts and fowls. 
They received the use of the five operations of Yahweh, and in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding, and in the seventh speech, an, an, uh, an interpreter of the cognitations thereof. Counsel and tongue and eyes and ears and heart gave he them to understand. So where does that come from? That comes from the spirit that the Heavenly Father put inside of you. You can't take that same spirit and put it inside of a, a technology or a computer, all right, for it to become sentient or, or self-sustaining or living. The only thing that it can you can do is program it being artificers, all right, to imitate, you know, uh, 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 the human activity. All right, you can't really give it life. So artificial intelligence isn't really living and never could really live. All right, the only thing that you can do is program a, a, a robot or a computer to imitate, you know, life, but it doesn't really have life, okay? And those five operations, you see, you touch, you taste, you smell and you hear. Those are the five operations. But then you have the ability to, to speak and the ability to understand speech, you know, and to also think. That's the reason why you can speak to humans. You can make a joke. All right. They, they, they'll find the joke funny. They'll laugh or you say something. They'll make them mad, you know, or you say something and they'll say, well, damn, that's deep. That's very intelligent. Other life forms out there doesn't have that. But the heavenly father gave that unto us, you know, as humans. But he gave the best part unto the children of Israel, because these are the people that he deal deals with. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans and Israelite foreigners scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Reading order says the future based his predictions on his observation of the exponential growth in various fields of science, technology in such as genetics, nanotechnology, and robotics. Advances in the, in, in the latter, too, will culminate in the development of nanobots that will repair cells damaged by aging. A aging. The nanobots would effectively make human immune to disease such as cancer, Kurzweil said. All right, so this is what they're trying to do. And this is the reason why we speak you know, telling you that, look, the MOTB is not sin, it's not white women, it's not, you know, uh, uh, the white man's philosophy. Although uh, um, the MOTB can be tied into that in a sense, but ultimately it's something physical. The MOTB, which is the mark of the beast, is the RFID CHIP, which is the chip, and the brain CHIP, all right? Their computer brain interface. All right, in which they want to link you to their artificial intelligence. They want to link you to a great database. All right. They want to link you to uh, technology, which ultimately puts you in slavery. All right. But they're thinking that they'll use that same technology to live forever. It ain't promised for you to live forever. The only thing that was promising to you is slavery. All right. And death. Now, however, from the beginning, the scripture says this, the book of Sirach 14 and 17 all flesh waxeth old as a garment, for the covenant from the beginning is thou shalt die the death. And who is the cause of this happening? Well, it first begins with Eve. But then her husband learned of the philosophy that she taught him, which caused what death to pass upon all flesh. The book of uh, Second Ezra 7 and 48. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though thou, uh, for though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we are all, but we all that come of thee. All right. And all nations upon the planet Earth are descendants of Adam. And this proves the existence of the Heavenly Father. This proves the existence of his Holy Son, Yahweh Shai. All right. This proves and, 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 and does away with that uh, uh, evolution theory. All right, that we uh, uh, evolved from 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 tadpoles, you know, all the way up into monkeys and from monkeys to humans. This does away with that. All right. Uh, uh, how can you explain death? Why do we die? If that's the case, why don't we live forever? All right. You would think that if evolution was 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 truly possible, that uh, uh, at some point people 
evolved in order to survive, in order to uh, 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 change, to adapt. You would think that they would adapt to live forever, to, to overcome the uh, and build up an immunity to disease, you know, to to, to death. Why, why haven't people evolved? Why ain't nobody evolved to overcome AIDS or HIV? <laughs> why didn't they evolve to overcome cancer, to survive or develop some immunity to it or or some new feature all right in their body because all of that's bullshit the truth is the heavenly father all right gave the blueprint yahweh shai created us okay and and uh in the beginning all right when adam was on the scene when he tr when he transgressed all right which it was his wife that transgressed first taught him the philosophy all right and by him partaking in it all right, that caused death to reign over all of us, man. The book of Sirach 40 and 1, great travail is created for every man. And a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam from the day that they go out of their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things. In which that day will be when their, when their body turns back into dust. All right. What, what do they say at funerals? Ashes to ashes dust to dust when you die your body goes back to the dust all right it turns back into dust and your spirit goes back to the heavenly father who gave it all right in the third and fourth generation he'll send that spirit back which is called reincarnation their imaginations of uh of things to come of the date of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of of heart so nobody wants to die all right <laughs> Everybody wants to live forever, but however, living forever is only promised to a particular people. It's not promised to everybody. It's not promised to Esau Edom. Now, Esau on the left-hand side wants to try to achieve this through his technology, but it will not happen. You will only get so far, and then the Heavenly Father is going to destroy your ass through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. And we're seeing the culmination of this build up upon the planet Earth. Wisdom of Solomon, the eighth chapter, verse 17. Now, when I consider these things in myself and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied with wisdom is immortality. So wait, who is going to be allied with wisdom? What nation is going to be allied with wisdom? Well, that's the children of Israel. When you go into scriptures like this. Uh, the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, and the 31st verse, is, it reads this. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they break, although I was in husband manner to them, said Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their power, and they will be my people. And they shall, uh, they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, except Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity and I remember their sins no more. All right, another one. I hate to sound like DJ Khaled, but another one. <laughs> Anyways, Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the 24th verse. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. When is this going to happen? For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from your, all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So 
This is going to take place when we're taken out of this captivity and brought back into the land of Israel. That's when the, the, the covenant will be fully established because there's something that has to happen. These bodies have to be changed. All right. The scripture saying the book of Sirach 17 to 30 for all things cannot be in man because the son of man is not immortal. But however, it would take for this wisdom, knowledge and understanding to be in us for us to be immortal. That's the reason why the scriptures say how that to be allied with wisdom is immortality. So what has to happen is these bodies have to be changed. The book of Sirach 19 and 19, the knowledge of the commandments of Yahweh is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of immor uh, the fruit of the tree of immortality. So it begins with the elect, because the only ones that are striving to do what please him right now is the elect of the nation of Israel. So what does it mean to be immortal? The word immortal, and this is from the, the online etymology, is the adjective, late 14th century deathless. From, from Latin immortalis, deathless, undying of gods. And what does the scripture say? The book of Psalms, all right, the 82nd chapter and the sixth verse. It says, I have said ye are gods and all of you are the children of the most high. So in that day, we'll return back to that God-like state all right, with spiritual power, with immortality, all right, imperishable, endless, of fame, all right, uh, of love, of work, all right, uh, uh, the opposite of mortal, all right, we won't die, we won't be subject to death or the things that cause death, all right, and that's through Yahweh Shai, we'll endure and last forever. The, the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. So if the sting of death is sin, what has to happen? If these laws and commandments are put inside of us and the only people that is promised that it will be put inside of perfectly is the nation of Israel. That means that they're the only ones that are going to live forever. All right. They're the only ones that are going to live forever. All right. The covenant was made with us. All right. And there was an agreement made with us to keep the laws and commandments. So therefore, by us breaking the covenant and not keeping the law says the commandments, sin was imputed unto us. All right, it was laid to our charge. But Yahweh Shai came and paid the price all right, of all of the debt that we were being charged and accumulated. He became death for us. All right. And through him, we will live. Reading on, it says, but thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, for as much as ye know that your labor is, is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor isn't in vain because after all of the suffering that we do for Yahweh Shai, as it is written, is not only set up for us to believe in Yahweh Shai, but to suffer uh, with him as well. All right. When you suffer with him, you shall also be glorified with him. And that glorification is going to come when Yahweh Shai appears in the chariots with the angels. All right. And he gathers the elect from the four corners of the earth and they're changed. OK. Revelation 13 and 14. And he deceiveth them all that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live okay so the miracles is going into his science his technology all right his math uh the mathematics behind it you know the engineering all right the computers you know the machines you know and and, and other things 
All right. He's deceiving the world by them. And he also created the image of the beast. All right. This whole system, which is based off of the ancient Roman system. And, and um, reading on and that had power to give life into the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. All right. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So it's not an actual image such as a picture of Cesare Borgia or a statue. All right. It's a system. All right. The system that they're using to govern the world and whoever don't comply or get in line with it, they shut them off from society. All right. Or either war against them or attack them in some some form or fashion. All right. For an example, you got a, a U, Uganda, I believe that's not with the with the L to the G, to the T, to the, the Q, whatever the hell that they call that. All right. And, and look at the remarks that the U.S. is making about them, that, look, if you do such and such, there's going to be repercussions. You know, it's going to be consequences. Why? Because they're not complying to, you know, what the what the image of the beast is saying. All right. <laughs> when they speak, the particular legislation and laws that they create and make, which amongst the Romans, that shit was accepted, acceptable. All right. You can be a high status individual doing that without, you know, any uh, uh, anyone looking down on you. However, there's other things that that uh, uh, that they're doing as well. But anyways, to get to the point and he calls of all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand on their foreheads and that no man by buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom and let him that have understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six. And there's more that you can do with that mark, the karagma. All right. Rather you receive it in your hand or in your or in your head besides just buying and selling. All right. They want to use these particular technologies to become immortal. All right. And also to have particular abilities. All right, uh, uh, certain godlike abilities, but really you're pseudo. All right, nigga, you a pseudo god with your pseudo technology. All right, you're false. All right, uh, uh, and the time is going to come that once you truly implement this, your destruction is coming. So, with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone. Peace and love, say, taste, and mercy be unto the whole full elect. Shalom, Abad, Babal, Kwambakiyam, Shalom.